Hello, extempers, speech and debaters, and everybody else. Everybody else. Sorry about that. Um, strap in, because today we're in for a wild ride. Our episode is going to be on the conflict in Ethiopia and Tigray, otherwise known as the civil war that is going on right now in the Horn of Africa. And there's, there's a lot of tea. There's going to be violence. There's going to be deaths. We're going to talk about you know, the casualties of war and the consequences of war too. So like, be prepared. But today we thought we'd bring you this episode because it is something that has been going on for a year now and something that has affected a lot of people and a whole entire region, which is really significant because international relations, whatnot, whatnot. But I'm Yu Yu. And I'm Spencer. And this like I didn't know that. is the half hour. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Sorry for the past two weeks. We haven't had an episode out, but please bear with us. There were technical difficulties. And we thought it was break, so like no episode released during Thanksgiving, you know. But stay tuned. I think we are probably going to do a series in which we discuss skills for extemp and to improve your extemp game going into the varsity season for y'all novices out there. Yeah, so the idea that we have about that is um, we're going to call it the prep room. Um, and basically, it's going to be like there's going to be five episodes that we're going to record. Um, probably is going to happen the week that we're making this recording. I would gander would be the best time frame for both of us. Um, and they'll be spaced out five five separate weeks. It is a it will not be published to YouTube. It's going to be a one clap exclusive. Um, that's because we need the YouTube algorithm to work in our favor, not against us. Um, so we've got that all planned. I apologize if it's very echoey. I'm in a very I'm in like an echo chamber, I guess we'll call it. Um, but nothing that I can really do about it this week. Um, my The room next to me decided that during the time of our recording of a podcast that it was a great moment to blast music at level 10. We just want to say like, thank you for listening so far and be mentally prepared for this episode. It's a lot, so... Let's get started, shall we, Spencer? Absolutely. And the way that I'm going to go about this background is going to make everybody mad. Um, but there's a real purpose to this. Um, it really can help to develop an introduction or go all the way to like making a very descriptive speech. Okay. We're, we're going to break down the conflict in Ethiopia in the short version the medium version and the long version. Okay. So the short version, which is probably best for backgrounds or, well, not background, but more of like um, an introduction, okay, is just this simple. The war started on November 4th of 2020. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed ordered an offensive military against Tigray. It was a response to an on-base attack in Ethiopia. Tigray had a political power in Ethiopia until Abiy Ahmed took power and then tensions escalated. Um, Abiy Ahmed took, came into power after 2018 anti-government protests. That's pretty simple. Hey, that's a good introduction material. If we're like looking for a point in the speech where we can develop good background information, then here is the medium version of what's happening. The crisis that is happening in Ethiopia is a result of a system of government that has, well, existed in Ethiopia for a long time. A powerful party in Tigray called the Tigray People's Liberation Front, also known as the TPLF, came up with an influential system in Ethiopia that since 1994 has been the source of Ethiopia's system. It basically broke Ethiopia into 10 different regions that had different ethnic groups control each region. With this, Ethiopia was more stable, but questions persisted about the strength of Ethiopia's democracy and human rights. 
Eventually, a troubling atmosphere led to protests that saw Ethiopia lead to the election of Abiy Ahmed. Abiy Ahmed did several things as prime minister. He liberalized politics. He ended a long-standing conflict with Eritrea, and because of that, earned him the Nobel Peace Prize in 2019. He set up the new Prosperity Party, and then he removed Tigray and leaders accused of corruption. Ultimately, this gained support for Ahmed, but, dis but discontent still existed by Tigrayans. Tigrayans think that this is a response for destroying the system that they created. In September 2020, Tigray wanted to hold their own elections. However, Ethiopia did not want them to. Basically, they were told it was illegal. In October of 2020, Tigray was cut from funding from Ethiopia's central government, and Tigray called this a declaration of war. So pretty intense conflict going on, and that is blatant, easy background information. Now for the long version, and this is the information that is more so important for this podcast, but also important for like in-depth, descriptive, extemp topics. Since his stance as prime minister, Abiy Ahmed has had sweeping changes in Ethiopia. His first speech as prime minister, Ahmed looked for three major changes to society. It's gonna be political reform, unity, and reconciliation. This came from feelings that democracy was not being obtained. Four ethnic parties had most of the control in Ethiopia for two decades. Tigrayans held 7% of that. The 70s and 80s held a war for the TPLF that was successful and allowed them to transform the government in 1991. This allowed autonomy in a number of different regions. It did have a tight grip on the central government, and arguments were made that the Tigrayans were not allowing for political opposition to their government. The coalition that was formed by the Tigrayans was removed in 2019 by Ahmed, and Tigrayans did not wish to join the new party that was made by Ahmed, which was the Prosperity Party. In September 2020, Tigray wished to hold, hold its own elections and show a district interest in the plan that was set forth by Ahmed. Tigray during this time argued that there was no real test since Ahmed's election, which shows that there is no real interest in the democracy set forth. The TPLF also believes that the friendship with Eritrea is bad because the prime minister has sent troops over to Tigray to support the Ethiopian prime minister's agenda. There has been a dispute between the border of Ethiopia, where Tigray is located, and Eritrea since 1998. It was a war that lasted until 2000. It made international news in 2018 and then ended in 2019 by the amid. Since November of 2020, 33% of Tigrayans have fled their homes because of Ahmed's actions to attack federal bases. Tens of thousands are refugees in Sudan. Now the TPLF is deemed as a, or as a terrorist organization. There's an estimate of at least 10,000 dead and 230 massacres. There is a real thought that this country, or that there's a real thought that there will be more racial ethnic disputes and basically break up Ethiopia. And this only seems to look like it's the beginning of a very long problem that is faced with the prime minister. Um, while people can praise prime minister Abiy Ahmed for being able to solve the war between Ethiopia and Eritrea or the situation and the conflicts, it still shows that there's a big problem with Tigray and the Eritrean border. And you, you, I think that all things considered, this isn't just a topic that pertains to Ethiopia. Its neighbors find this to be a significant problem as well. Yeah, and if you listen to our past episode on the coup in Sudan, you would know that this is the region called the Horn of Africa that they're in. And at the moment, the stability of the region is very fragile and no one really knows whether or not if it's going to get better or going to get worse. Um, and just like another tiny little thing I wanna mention, it's Eritrea, not Eritrea, but um, besides the point, moving on. 
we also want to mention what everybody else thinks about the civil war that is going on and get more in depth about the conflicts that are happening, the sides that are present there, and what everybody else thinks about the stability of the Horn of Africa and why it matters. So we can start with the citizens first. Abi Ahmed has a decent amount of support from its citizens, like Spencer mentioned. We could safely say that he has popular support. But side note, and something interesting you can use to like wow your judges is that Abi Ahmed is part of the Oromo ethnic group in Ethiopia. And just to let you know, the Oromo and the Tigrayan ethnic groups has not been friendly with each other at all. They're like basically enemies. And basically more tea on that later, <laughs> but the reason why Abiy Ahmed has so much popular support is because the Tigray People's Liberation Front, or TPLF, has already had its chance in government. When they were in power, this was called the Derg government, and it was unpopular. They had 27 years to make changes and to democratize Ethiopia, but that didn't work, and instead, their government felt more like an authoritarian regime rather than a democratic one, according to the people. Many people that are parts of different tribes don't think that a Tigrayan government would solve its issue due to the broken promises that they have made to Ethiopia. So they want to take their chances with Ahmed. But obviously, not everyone agrees with the war or with Ahmed. For starters, the Aroma Liberation Army has joined forces with the TPLF, which I think is quite a stab in the back for Ahmed, as we know they are known enemies, but then they decided to team up with each other for this war. Um, however, you do have to consider that the casualties of war and the suffering that war causes is a lot. So the people in the Tigrayan region have been suffering immensely due to a blockade. It's so bad that 200 children under the age of five have died of starvation. Hospitals can't get the medical supplies they need to treat patients, so they've been experiencing three to four deaths a week from treatable diseases like pneumonia and diarrhea. Ahmed has also had a very brutal crackdown on the Tigrayan population in Ethiopia, detaining thousands, and the detentions have only increased in the past weeks. The UN has even stated that all of these detentions are not warranted and are ethnically driven, as these detentions include elderly and even children, all or mostly all of Tigrayan descent. And just generally from the war, it's displaced millions from their homes into surrounding countries like Sudan and Eritrea. And this is what I mean when I say that the Horn of Africa is sort of falling apart and the stability is in question. You can definitely see why some people might be wary of Ahmed, but overall, the majority of the population has suffered a lot from the TPLF, so they want to stick with their chances with Ahmed. But this also drags in the international community and what they think about this whole situation slash what they're doing about it. As we have mentioned, the UN does not like this war at all and has stated very clearly that both sides have committed war crimes during this war in a four month investigation. They're even more anxious as the rebel forces or the TPLF are getting closer and closer to the capital Addis Ababa. Many are fearful that this war is going to spiral out into a full on war and not just a civil war. Human Rights Watch has even called on the UN to start the appropriate actions to deal with these human rights atrocities, mainly calling for sanctions on Ethiopia. The US has also been very concerned, stating that this is a threat to national security and foreign policy of the United States. They have also ordered non-emergency US government employees, along with their families, to leave the region. The US has also warned that this is something that can destabilize the Horn of Africa and cause a lot of unintended consequences. Many have also found it hypocritical that when Ahmad had received his Nobel Peace Prize, he had used war imagery to describe how bad war was. But now he's at the head of the civil war, leading it straight on. Biden has even said that Ethiopia would lose on trade agreements because of the human rights violations that have happened and as a result have started sanctions. Both the US and the African Union have pursued efforts into creating a ceasefire so that all parties can take on diplomatic negotiations. But the problem is, there aren't really promises for a political resolution. So even if they can get talks to happen, um, there really is no way to reach a peace agreement or a political agreement. When we look at the surrounding countries of Ethiopia, they are also starting to choose sides, which is why it seems like it could spiral into a full-on war and not just a civil war anymore. Eritrea has shown support for Ahmed as the peace agreement the two leaders signed in 2018 was secretly a war pact to fight against the TPLF together. Indeed, armed groups from Eritrea have taken part in the war, mainly contributing to the Tigrayan population casualty count. 
And as for Sudan, they indirectly and directly worsen the crisis and stability of the Horn of Africa because of the coup that is happening there too, um, just to tie it into a past episode. Um, because of the coup causing political instability, it kind of adds fuel to the fire if um, Ethiopia is also experiencing political instability and it seems like these countries are just gonna split apart and kind of move a lot of things around in the Horn of Africa and cause a lot, a lot of like political instability and just chaos. But if you haven't listened to the Sudan episode, I definitely would recommend listening to it because it also contains some information about the Ethiopia Tigray conflict. And it also gives you insight into the instability of the Horn of Africa and why that matters. Overall, it doesn't seem like a resolution is going to be reached just yet. But Ahmed's forces are weak and the TPLF are getting closer and closer to the capital. So it is a big worry for the international community to resolve this conflict before it can get any worse than it's already gotten. And also Ahmed doesn't seem like he wants to step down anytime soon. So there we have it. Another not <laughs> resolved ending like all of our episodes. Great for unresolved endings. Um, yes. <laughs> This brings us right into the questions. Um, the, the first question that we've had, we're keeping it short, simple, fast today. Um, first question that we have, does the US need to get more involved in the Tigray war? And I'll, I'll go and start. I'll, I'll, I'll give obviously both sides, just like every single episode. Um, I think that, most people are going to give an answer of yes. Um, and this is because um, there's, there's actually an article from the Department of State that was released on the top of this, uh, the top of November. Um, and it basically discusses how the United States was extremely supportive of Ahmed's decision to partner up with um, Eritrea. Um, I'm Eritrea, yeah. <laughs> Eritrea. Okay. My pronunciation for African countries is not very great. Um, but it, it shows that there was a major support for it, and rightfully so. It was a long time, it was a long time conflict that um, in essence needed to end. And it was a really good thing to be looked at. Um, However, once kind of in 2020, uh, the United States started having some governmental like issues with Ethiopia. Things were falling kind of away from what seemed to be a state of normalcy um, and what was going to be like a good friendship for two countries was turning into a really big problem. And the United States started to realize that this is going to involve um, a lot more time than we originally thought. Um, the Department of State is basically making a claim that like the people who are who represent the Horn of Africa did not that did not realize at this time that um, Ethiopia was going to be the main concern. They thought it was going to be some other countries. Um, and they didn't expect to have, see a conflict of this nature show up. Um, and at this point in time, it's a, it's a real problem. Obviously, the United Nations is claiming that um, is very much not in support of this war. Um, they don't like the issues that are happening with the war crimes, et cetera. So the U.S. should probably take a step into the war, um, partly because if they are really, if the United States is in support of Ahmed, um, what what should be happening is to find a way to, in essence, peacekeep the war. It's not necessarily like send our troops to fight for one side or another. It the best method would probably through a be a form of peacekeeping to ensure that things don't get out of hand. Um, the answer for no, let's see, what did I have written? No, I, 
I argue that um, losing bilateral agreements is actually a pretty big issue, um, especially for the United States in African regions. I would I would gander that the U.S. still wants to look for like power, um, and losing bilateral agreements is a pretty big issue for the United States because Africa is kind of one of those areas that if the U.S. loses ground in one state, for example, um, it's definitely a problem that could turn to Russia or China. And a lot more involvement from the other countries, from those countries could lead to the U.S. seeing a big problem with themselves. Um, like bilateral agreements are pretty important for the United States, especially if it wants to continue to exert power, if it wants to show the spread of democracy. Um, because Africa is one of those regions that is highly contested. Um, it still is to today's day and age. Um, China is still involved in many countries in this region. They've been involved for years upon years. Um, Russia and China have been involved in Sudan for quite a long period of time, um, especially during the conflict of Darfur, which um, many of you might recall as a massive extraordinary crime. Um, some really good research to do there is um, like Sudan's right next door um, and with China and Russia's involvement and constant involvement in the country, losing ground in Ethiopia could in essence lose US power. Um, and really cause what would be an uprising from other countries. Um, so I would, I would gander that the U.S. wants to hold bilateral agreements in Ethiopia as a good no answer because of Russian and, China, and Chinese power right now in society. I pretty much agree with that point. I think I would say no to this question, um, but in like a different way. I think I would have bilateral trade agreements as like one of the reasons uh, in my speech, but the other reason in my speech is just generally like casualties um, and like taking it to the more emotional level and talking about the people that have suffered from this war already. And the way that the United States is going to get more involved in the Degrayan War is to actually like heighten sanctions and um, just basically stop more resources from going into the country. We know that blockades and that um, sanctions don't really help the situation in terms of like war. Um, and it doesn't really help the civilians in the country either because they're not getting access to the medicine that they need. They're not getting access to food and they're not getting access to a bunch of the resources that they need to just survive. So. I would say no in terms of like people, but I also wanted to expand a little bit on Spencer's point in terms of explaining the relationship that's happening now between the United States and Ethiopia. So in the conversation article that I have linked, um, it talks about how Biden's response is not received in a positive light um, in Ethiopia, because even if he has, you know, had sanctions on both sides of the spectrum. It doesn't really solve the issue. Um, it makes Prime Minister Ahmed very angry that he's taking this type of stance and that like he's going to decrease the amount of trade agreements that they have and he's going to kind of cause this economic harm to Ethiopia, but like on both sides because Ahmed believes that the TPLF is a terrorist organization and if the United States is not willing to stand against this ter terrorist organization and stand with the government of Ethiopia, then it causes a lot of problems and really increases the anti-US sentiment that is happening there. Um, so getting more involved at this point seems like choosing sides because essentially the United States, when they get involved in wars, they want to choose a side to win um, in order to like have the most peaceful outcome. So it is going to be choosing sides when you go into these agreements. But if you go in, choose sides, it 
drags in a lot of factors and with like diplomacy and soft power and hard power it is really hard to kind of have a clean slate and have like a peaceful resolution if you include the United States into these talks. Um, but like from what we're doing, what we're doing with like intervention, it's not working and it's only driving them more towards um, um, like, yeah, like Spencer said, China and Russia. Um, and so it hasn't really worked to kind of get the peace that they've wanted. And it's only caused like more civilian harm. And it's also worse intentions between Ethiopia and the United States. Um, I know former President Trump has also kind of worsened those tensions too. So as like President Biden comes in and he's not really doing anything to improve relations with Prime Minister Ahmed, it's harder to gain a resolution and it's harder to like gain their trust that we are there to help them. So I'd say like no intervention is probably best here. Um, but I do agree with the fact that like if you were to say yes to this question, it might be the fact of, you know, intervening peacefully um, through the UN, through the African Union, but not necessarily just the US by itself, because just the US by itself can cause a lot of weird feelings among the Ethiopian population and among Ethiopia's government. But if you involve like the UN and if you involve, involve the African Union, then it's easier to resolve the like resolve the conflict and come to a resolution because it's not directly like the United States relations directly with Ethiopia, it's Ethiopia's relations to the rest of the world uh, with the UN and with the African Union in Africa. So yeah, that's like all I have to say about that question. I think kind of from there, I'm, I'm starting to read more on like probably a no is the better answer here. Um, probably the best no answer that I can honestly think of is this should be a UN thing. Um, the UN has, has um, within its own constitution, it basically says that it has um, peacekeeping organizations. It's a long, complicated process of how that works. Um, but basically, they have peacekeeping, a peacekeeping militia um, that is solely volunteer based. And what, what it is, is basically, you have a group of you have a group of people who are there to not be on one side or another. They're there to, in essence, observe the war um, and to ensure that war is done in ways that don't have extraordinary crimes in which is dangerous to one side or another. Um, so probably the United Nations through a peacekeeping organization is the best way to do this. Um, and the best way to have some sort of involvement. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave my comments there. Um, something you should know though, is that the US is kind of getting a little bit more involved because US Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken has plans or has already at this point made trips to Ethiopia to try to like start talks or at least like come to a better relation with Ethiopia's government. Um, so we are like getting more involved, but it's a question of like whether we should or shouldn't. And I don't necessarily know if Anthony Blinken is gonna help, <laughs> but we will see. And also that is something important that you should know. You should probably know the US Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, get in your head. Okay. But the second question that we have for you today is, is the Ethiopian government losing the Tigrayan War? And I guess I'll start because Spencer started last time. So I would also say that this question is a yes, that Ethiopia's government is losing the Tigray War just because of what I've read up on it so far in terms of the rebel groups gaining more ground and getting closer and closer to the capital of Ethiopia. Um, and the fact that Ahmed has increased the amount of detentions of the Tigrayan population um, in Ethiopia, that it's an indicator that he's scared. Um, mostly scared that, you know, Tigrayans are going to question his rule or like get him out of power. That indicates that the Ethiopian government is kind of losing the war in this situation because they don't have like full control or they can't like 
really resolve the conflict or gain any more ground. At this point, they're on the defensive. They can't really go offensive, but Ahmed kind of wants to go offensive to push off the Ukrainian forces. However, it's not necessarily happening. And at the moment, it's still a very much big concern that these forces are getting closer, or these forces are getting closer and closer to the capital of Ethiopia. But if you were to say like, no, the Ethiopian government isn't losing this war, some points that I would bring up is Ahmed's relation with Eritrea and how they have kind of this agreement between the two of them to stop the TPLF forces. That is kind of an indicator that it's not going to result in a takedown of the government necessarily, like a takedown of Ahmed at least <laughs> necessarily because in the past, Eritrea had supported the TPLF, but now Eritrea is supporting Ahmed, which is different. And in another conversation article that I've linked, it talks about the five reasons why this isn't a repeat of history and why the TPLF won't actually gain um, power again. Um, simply because at the moment, they don't really have popular support. They don't have Eritrea's support anymore. The United States, if they were to get involved, they would probably get involved on Ahmed's side. Um, just because it is like the legitimate government that is standing and they have already seen how the TPLF is more of, has ruled in a more of like authoritarian type regime. So those are all indicators of how it could indicate that the Ethiopian government won't lose the Tigray war. I think the answer to this question could be dependent on how you define losing. Um, and I'll I'll agree with you. I like I like the answer of um, the TPLF is clearly gaining more ground. Um, I don't think we need to expand too much on that. That's a fairly straightforward argument. Um, my answer to no would be kind of what I stated right at the end of my background, and that is there is a possibility that Ethiopia could be broken into multiple different regions. Okay, and I propose that this would be a pretty strong no because it's clear that Ahmed is not supportive of the system that the TPLF made, okay, where they were able to break it into different regions and more wants like a focus of a singular central government. But if it was to break into different regions um, and the war is to result in that, then while that sounds like a still law, a big loss because Ethiopia is no longer a singular country. Kind of under this method, you could argue that Ahmed technically won um, because you have a number of different countries that are broken up. It's no longer the original, um, it's no longer the original one singular government. Instead, it's, you have um, Tigray as one area um, another region as another, right? Um, you can have the, those 10 different regions now become like 10 separate countries. Um, as an example, it's probably not going to look like that if it was to break up. But um, that could pose as a major win for Ahmed. Um, it could be examined that way because this could be like it's clear that he doesn't like the support of that right now and would rather have a form of a central government. And having different regions could allow Ahmed to have a central government in which he is the prime minister in that area. And then a different force of power is next door. So it kind of a crazy out there argument, but um, reasonably speaking, Clearly, he doesn't like the support of the system now. And to be able to have it broken up into a way that there is a central government in one area could pose as a major win for Ethiopia. Yeah, so those are our answers to those questions really love short questions like that because A, they're really easy to memorize and B, they're really easy to answer if you have all the information that you need. So hopefully this podcast episode has provided you all of the information you need to learn about Ethiopia and the Tigrayan conflict. Um, 
So just for like extra research purposes, because we obviously know this is a big topic and we can't cover everything, is just looking into how peace talks are going or if peace talks are happening and making sure to know all of the people that are involved. So maybe knowing the Eritrean government, um, the leader of Eritrea, uh, the leader of Ethiopia right now, the TPLF obviously, and kind of knowing all the intricacies of what's happening and why it's happening. And maybe knowing a little bit more about the ethnic backgrounds and why it matters that this is happening right now would also be very beneficial to your understanding of this whole entire topic. But hopefully we gave, gave you like a floor to start on so you can go you know, higher with your education and your knowledge of Ethiopia. But that's all we have for today's episode and this week's episode. Please tune in for the prep room and get more knowledge about extent that way because we think it's cool and we like helping y'all. So I hope you're winning your round so far. I hope this episode has helped. I hope our podcast has helped get the one of the round. If you don't get the one of the round, then let us know how you did. Let us know how we did. Um, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to DM either me or Spencer. We are available almost all the time on Instagram, or at least we'll, we will respond as fast as we can. If not, feel free to email us. Um, yeah, thank you so much for listening. Tune in next week. Don't stop listening. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell, you know, for notifications. We, our episodes are a day early on our YouTube channel and not just the podcast. So like do that. Help us, help us pay our college tuition, y'all. We're gonna give you a script that she has to read from at the end of every episode from this point forward. Um, no. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you all so much for listening. Thank you for listening to me in this echo chamber. Um, it is, thank you for your constant support. Um, and until next time, we will see you all later.